done grid portraits before, or maybe you've heard of them, um, and they're pretty straightforward. You get a picture, and essentially you're replicating it one square at a time. This is an example of a, uh, a gridded picture, and here's another one. Sometimes they're very realistic, uh, almost like a photograph, and then sometimes they could be much more abstract, where you can see the grid and it's there purposefully. It's kind of a, an artistic texture that you can include in the grid drawing or sort of ignore it. So some people don't want evidence that there was ever a grid and some people are embracing the grid and doing drawings. Here's another one that was done by my class and each student had a different square to do the portrait of our school uh, namesake. But there's something I've done uh, for years that's been a lot of fun that's based on the grid but um, much more interesting, I think, and it's called a warped grid. So here's a self-portrait I did some years ago of myself as a warped grid. And though it looks like it would be challenging, um, it's not very hard to do, and measuring is a lot more forgiving uh, with these. Here's another one um, based on a Chuck Close portrait. He used grids too, so I took one of his famous images and warped it onto a curved surface. So I'm going to show you today how you can make your own warped grid. And the easiest way to do this is to remember the number eight. Um, and eight is one that's easy to divide up. And that's what we're going to do to create our grids. So you'll see um, that there are eight squares going across and eight squares up the side uh, for both of these. So eight's going to be kind of our magic number. So I'm going to move the camera and give you a, uh, a better look at the technique that we're going to be using. So I have an image here um, that I'm going to use as an example. And it doesn't really matter what the picture is. It could be of a person, could be of a face, could be of an object, a cartoon, almost anything that you can find and print out. You could also pull an image from a magazine, but try and make it as large as you can because that's easier to work with. Then instead of measuring, we're going to use that number eight that I was talking about, and we'll do a little folding. So we're going to take this picture, fold it in half, and we'll open it, and we're going to fold each half in half. And you can see that that gives us one, two, three, four sections. So we're going to Keep those in half and go one more half again. So to the center. And to the center. So that gives us eight lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight going across. Then we're going to repeat that going in the other direction. So I'll go ahead and speed this up so you can see me fold it in half. All right, so now we have it folded and we have our lines going vertical and horizontal. And if you wanted to, you can go back and re-outline those with a ruler or you can, you know, if you trust yourself not to wrinkle it anymore, then you could do it just like this. Um, so now these are not squares and that's okay. Um, because it's a warped grid, we don't have to worry about going from square to square. We don't have to worry about the shapes being the same because it's gonna be warped uh, anyway. So next we're going to do the transfer to grid. So for this, I'm just going to think of a shape that I want. Um, and there's lots of different things that I could do. I could, you know, create a shape like I did before of a, a C kind of shape of a grid. I can um, create two lines and then have it do this kind of a thing. I could even have it bubble out. Maybe do that kind of a thing. There's really no limit to what it is that you can do with your grid. As long as you have your top, bottom, and sides to work with.
So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over and I'm going to do a grid that starts kind of small down here and goes large over here. And I am going to use a ruler because I want those parts to be kind of straight, right? So it um, doesn't really matter the length of it. So I'm just going to make a line segment. Then I'm going to make another line segment up here. Now, if you choose to do a line segment uh, and you know that you can divide it by eight, that's great. It kind of saves you a little bit of work later on, but ultimately it's not going to matter. So now I just have to join this to this. And I could go down across this way. I could go up and down this way. Um, you know, you want to be uh, smooth as you can as you kind of join these lines up. And then this one, I'm going to have it kind of sway a little bit this way. All right. So now I've got my four uh, edges um, to what it is that I'm going to grid. And now I have to divide it up. Again, eight is that magic number. So you can measure if you want to, but technically you don't have to. So if I look at this and let's say I'm going to measure four divided in half is two. So that's easy. Twelve divided by two is six. So I know that I need my center line to somehow connect to these two things. So if I'm not sure where it needs to go through, again, I could measure. I see from here it's about five and a half. So that's going to be two and a quarter. I could make a dot up here. This measurement is about 10. So I could hit about five from here. My measurement is 12 again, so I'm going to hit about six. And then essentially I just connect the dots and smooth it out as I go. Okay, and maybe here bulges out a little bit more than I might like. So I can go ahead and re-smooth that out if I'm using a pencil. There we go. Now I'm going to do the rest without using the ruler just to show you that it is possible. Now I just divide each of these sections in half. So I can just kind of put some dots that look halfway between and then go ahead and connect those dots. Here, that looks about halfway. Again, if you're a little off, it's a warped grid. It's not going to matter much. Here I'm connecting those. So I've got four. Now I need to go down to eight. So these are so close, I can just kind of run a line in between. And then I've created a warped grid, at least my vertical lines for my warped grid. Now I need my horizontal lines. So again, I'm not going to measure this time. I could, you know, I've got this, I've got a curve. I can curve my ruler and see, okay, that's about 20 inches. I know I need to hit 10. Um, so, or I could just kind of look at it and say, okay, that looks about halfway. That looks about halfway. And I'm going to join that with a little bit of a curve. Okay. Now I go halfway again to halfway again. And I go ahead and join that here, halfway here, halfway here, go ahead and join that. And then halfway again. So we've gone from two to four to eight. And now I have my warped grid. So I've got eight going up and eight going across. And I have the same thing going on here. So I'm going to take a look at just one square. I'm going to pick one that's a little, little challenging. And I'm going to highlight it for you so you can see it right here. Okay, so that's uh, four over, one, two, three, four, and one down. That's going to be that square. So as I look at it, I want to kind of think of this in parts. Here's half, and then here's quarters. I don't have to go smaller than that. That's going to be accurate enough for what it is that I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead and work in pen. And I know that my forehead is coming through the line a little bit to the side of that center line. So here's the center. I'm going to go over here, make a dot. And my forehead exits above the quarter mark. So if that's halfway, that's a quarter. There's a little bit above it. And I go ahead and I join that with the little curve that I see. 
I can go ahead and throw in a little stubble that I'm seeing on the edge of my face. My eyebrow goes from this corner over to the side of my face. And so I would say going from about here and cutting down to about there. I'm going to make it sort of wide and exaggerate it because that's what this is. I'm going to go ahead and fill in a little extra stubble there and then that square is done. It's really up to you if you're going to handle the background or not, um, but you can continue on. Now I can look at this square and again start to divide it up as I look at it and then I can connect where I'm seeing this, connect over here, add a little bit more of the stubble or hair coming out here. I've got my eyebrow coming from about this corner over a little bit more than halfway. And then the glasses are in there too. So you would continue along same way you would do a traditional grid, except you're going to be going square by square as you finish this up. Keeping in mind, you know, your kind of fractions as you go, you're going to have a really great result.